Okay, I think I'm live. Can anybody hear me? Can anybody see me? Am I speaking into the void? Or is anyone there? If you can like this video, leave a comment, say hello, introduce yourself. That'll allow me to know that I'm not talking to myself. I'll give it a minute for some people to join before we introduce what we're going to do. So leave me a comment. Ah, we've got a comment. Hello, hello. Yes, we're here. Hannah in year five. Another hello. Great. Hello to everyone. Like this video, leave a comment. We've got an exciting session for you today. I let the Linky Thinks music play just so that we've got some background music. And it helps me to introduce myself as the founder of Linky Thinks. If you haven't met me before, hello, I'm Alexander Rosenberg. People call me Ali. And I'm the founder of Linky Thinks. Uh, you may be familiar with my products like the Word Wheel books. Many of you have already attended my classes. And we've got a few students of mine who are waiting in the waiting room. And they're going to join us as special guests today. So before I introduce them, introduce yourself in the comments. I wonder whether these are parents or children watching, or maybe a bit of both. We're going to be talking about vocabulary and vocabulary building, and not just how to expand your vocabulary, but how to use it effectively. So maybe have a pad of paper and a pen handy, you might need it. But other than that, you can leave your answers in the comments as we go along, and we'll try and interact with you as much as possible. So um, yeah, more will become clear in a minute. We've got Arav in year five. We've got Tara. We've got my brothers, Oliver and Daniel watching. We've got Hannah. We've got a few faces and names I recognize. Hi, Mazuma. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Kiran. Hi, Nancy, Sadaf, Sheetal, Sian, Ronik, Veena. Dipali, Jasmine, Chitra, Akila, Kiran, Debraj, Sava. Some familiar names and some I hope to get to know in due course. So I'm going to welcome in some special guests, students of mine, past and present, and, you know, Hopefully, some of you are future students of mine. We have Venkat, Rishi, and Sara. Venkat, Rishi, and Sara, are you there? Can you hear me? Hello. Hi, Sara. Hello. Hi, Rishi. Hello. Hi, Venkat. Hello. I'm going to spotlight myself so you can all see my beautiful face while I talk. So there we go. We can see all of us now. How are you all? Um, happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy did, everybody New Year. Have a, did everyone have a good holiday? Yeah. Well, so yep. nice to see you. We've got Venkat, who's just finished his 11 plus exams. Some of you at home might recognize him. Say hello to Venkat. He's joined me on a, a Facebook Live session before. Hello. We've everyone. got Sara, who's kind of in the middle of it all, just coming towards the end. She's got a few more things to do. He's joined me on a session before. And we've got Rishi, who's a bit younger. You're kind of, it's all coming up for you, isn't it? Yeah. But you've been doing really, really well in all of our sessions. Now, I'm going to introduce you with some nice vocabulary because that's what today's all about. We've got the venerable Venkat. Do you know what venerable means, Venkat? No. If you're venerable, it means respectable, highly regarded in great standing and, and, and that's exactly what you are Venkat. We've got the resplendent Rishi. 
Do you know what resplendent means, Rishi? No. It kind of means glorious, shining, gleaming. And look at you. Of course you are resplendent. And then Sarah, I would say, looks serene. <laughs> Tell everyone what serene means, serene, Sarah. Yes. What's it uh, mean? Serene means calm or tranquil. Calm, tranquil, peaceful. Is that an accurate description of you today? Yes. <laughs> you look it. So what are we doing today? We're going to, well, I'll let you introduce yourself with maybe your favourite word. And then we're going to delve in talking about some of my favourite words. And today is not just going to be about cramming new words down your throats. It's going to be about how to decode words, how to use words, how to build vocabulary on your own. And I'm really excited because this is one of my favourite things to do. So, Venkat, what's your favourite word? My favourite word is family. Although it may not be as grand as such a grand word as resplendent or anything else, my family plays an important role in my life. It's a word meaning love, care and affection. Without them, I would not be who I am today. Therefore, family is my favourite word. Whoa! Wasn't expecting such a considered answer. That's a brilliant answer. Yeah, I can't argue with that. And I think maybe uh, you've learned a few things from our uh, interview prep course in presenting yourself there, haven't you? This, this guy's a pro. Sarah, what's your favourite word? Um, my favourite word is iridescent because I think it's quite, it's a word that gives quite a vivid uh, description in the reader's mind. And it means shimmering with many colours. Um, and, I, and I also believe that this has quite a positive connotation as well. Good answer. Iridescent. Great word. People at home, type in your favourite words as well. I want to hear them. Rishi, what's your favourite word and why? Um, my favourite word is Brobdenadia, which is a more sophisticated word, which is a more sophisticated description for very big. I wonder where you learned that word. Was it on the pink page of the word wheel book for adjectives? Brobdingnagian. There it is. Yes. And it basically actually means um, like monstrous, as big as a monster. Um, I like that word as well. Shall I tell you what my favourite word is? Have you ever heard the word sesquipedalian? I'll write it down for you. Does anyone at home know the word sesquipedalian? Write it in the write your answer in the chat, and I want to hear from other people. What are your favourite words? Um, sesquipedalian. Let me write it down. Bear with me. The reason I like the word sesquipedalian. Can you see the screen, everyone? Give me a wave. Yeah. Um, the reason I like sesquipedalian. is because it's an ironic word. It means the use of lots of overly long and complicated words. So it is what it says. Sesquipedalian is exactly what it means. It's a long, complicated word, and it means using lots of long, complicated words. Do you like that? That's why it's my favorite. But there's a problem. I have something called hippomonstrosesquipedaliophobia. You all know what that means, right? Do you, Venka? I think Don't say I... it yet. Don't say it yet. I actually think you know what it means. I think so. Well, I'm going to just mute you all for a second because there's some feedback coming through. So maybe unmute yourselves when you come to speak. But hippomonstro sesquipedaliophobia is a ridiculous word. Does anybody in the chat think they know what it means? Let's see what people are saying. Um, Al Yona has said, my favorite word is supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Wonderful. Someone's a fan of Mary Poppins. Someone else has said, discombobulated, great word. Daniel M. Rosenberg, my older brother, has said, 
Uh, I don't even think I can pronounce that. Flossinonifilipelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelepelep
Um, and you can find, if you want to book a place, you can find the link in this video. Um, it's a restricted size class and um, it'll be a two and a half hour masterclass on a Sunday afternoon. We're gonna go deeper into all of this stuff. So today is just an introduction really. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do now. I'm going to show you all a sentence. And this sentence is telling you something that you already know, but it's using really fancy vocabulary in a way that is not necessarily useful. Would you like to see? I want you to tell me in the comments, if you're at home or you three in person, what this sentence means. Can you see this sentence? Sarah, read it out for me, if you would. To take a syntactic construction and reverse the auxiliary verb with the subject, it is to transmogrify the grammatical <laughs> semantics, interrogated into a declarative. Yes, so to take a syntactic construction and reverse the auxiliary verb with the subject is to transmogrify the grammatical semantics from an interrogative into a declarative. You all know what that means, don't you? Don't catch, do you know what it means? Does it mean that first Don't tell me yet, don't tell me yet, but do you think you know? I think I know. Do you think you know? Okay, Rishi, do you think you know? I think I know part of it. You think you know part of it. Um, what about you at home? Who thinks you know? Gitika has said, no idea. Okay, lots of people saying no, no idea, uh, no. Oliver has said, hmm. But I'm telling you, this is something you understand really well. It's just said in a way that is not necessarily an example of good communication. Then Kat, tell me, what did you think it meant? There's first a question. You take the auxiliary verb, for example, do, um, do you have this? And then you, do you have a umbrella? an umbrella you take the do and then you reverse it with the subject which is the umbrella like and then it transforms it into a declarative which means you are saying something instead of questioning it that's exactly what it means and well done let's say it in a simple way okay and then with i, I guarantee you that everyone at home will understand this look Oops, one second. In a sentence, you can swap the subject and an auxiliary verb to make a question into a statement. Sarah, did you understand that? Yes. <laughs> Rishi, did you understand that? Yes. Everybody at home, did you understand that? We're getting lots of yeses. If you're still not sure, let me prove it to you. Look at these two sentences. We've got, will Venkat succeed in his exams? This is the auxiliary verb. This is the subject. We've swapped them and we've got Venkat will, ex will succeed in his exams. This is a question. That is a statement. That is an interrogative. And that is a declarative. Easy peasy, lemon, as they say, squeezy. Now, we could break this down by saying, well, a syntactic construction is simply just a sentence. Because, sorry about my handwriting there. Because syntax is just the rules of grammar and structure in a sentence. Auxiliary verb, those are words like will or may or shall. We've got transmogrify, which just means, Rishi, what do you think transmogrify means? Maybe change. Yeah, just a fancy word for change. We've got grammatical semantics. Semantics are just the meanings of words. It just means meaning. An interrogative means question. A declarative, whoops, means a statement. This is an unnecessarily long, winded, sesquipedalian, verbose, or... Here's a good word. Uh, magniloquent way of saying something very simple. Now, 
what we're going to do now is we're going to learn a little bit about where words come from, how they're made, and this is going to give you the skills to decode fancy vocabulary even when you've not got a tutor like me sat next to you, okay? So as I said before, today is not all about me just shoving words at you, sesquipedalian, magniloquent, serene, venerable, and then you vomit them back out later on in your life without knowing not what they mean. This is all about gaining those core skills in understanding words, remembering words, and knowing how to use them. Does everyone understand that? Great. Okay, well, let me show you something. I've drawn a picture of a tree, okay? And this little secret is gonna be part of a new product that I'm working on. It's not ready yet, so I can't tell you much about it, but this is my picture of a tree. Let me know when you can see my tree. Give me a wave. Give me a thumbs up in the comments if you can see my tree. So I drew this picture of a tree. What do you think a tree could have to do with learning vocabulary? Apologize. Can you all hear a weird noise, by the way? Me, Sorry about that. I don't know why it's doing it. It's because I've used a new cable for um, plugging in this device. So I apologize to try and ignore it. Um, why do you think I've chosen a tree, Venkat? A tree starts as a small seed, and then it grows in tra and transforms into a lush and a lush oak, which symbolizes you start from a beginner, keep on working your way up to a pro or an expert. That is a nice metaphor. It's not quite the reason I've chosen a tree. What's at the bottom of a tree? What holds the tree to the ground and soaks up all the water? Sarah? The roots. The roots. And we've all heard of roots when it comes to words, haven't we? What is a root word, Rishi? So a root word is a core word, basically. A core word is a good way of putting it. It's kind of the smallest kind of building block of a word that is kind of built on top of to make the word. It's kind of, you know, you have lots of words that have different meanings, but they have the same root. That's the kind of most basic way of putting it. So we'll write at the bottom a root, and then I want you at home and you three to give me examples of words that share that root. So for example, I'm gonna give you a Latin root, because most of our, many of our words in the English language have an origin in Latin or Greek. I'm gonna give you the root spec, S-P-E-C, and that is from the Latin, meaning what? What do you think spec means in Latin? I'm gonna give you a minute because I want people at home to tell me what they think. What do we think that spec could relate to when you see it in a word? And in a minute, I'm going to ask you for some examples. Someone has said spectate. That is an example. We'll come to those in a minute. Tell me what we think spec actually means. Go on, Sarah. Go on, Sarah. Um, I think it means, I think it might mean to see. Exactly, to see or to look or to observe. So we'll say to look at or to observe. Now, give me some of, we'll branch our way up and we will come up with some examples of spec words. Venkat, give me a word that has spec in it. Spectacled. Spectacle or spectacles, meaning either something worth looking at or the spectacles that you're wearing right now. In, the, in other words, eyeglasses. You see through them. Rishi? Spectator. A spectator. What is a spectator? It's basically a person that watches something. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Someone who, like, you might have a spectator of a sport or a spectator at some sort of, you know, um, dramatic event. Uh, Sarah, give me one. Um, I've got 
two. Go on. Um, I've got spectacular. Oh, and spectacular speculate. answer. And what was the second one, sorry? Speculate. Very good. So what does spectacular mean? Um, spectacular means extremely good. Yeah, it means something worth looking at. Something that is a spectacle. And what does it mean to speculate? That's a verb, that one. Um, it means to watch or observe. Mm, not quite. It kind of means, not quite to guess, but kind of to think about or to look for different answers, different possible answers when, uh, when coming to a conclusion. Um, we've got some answers in the chat here. We've got specify or specific, which means something very particular. In other words, it comes from meaning to look closely at one thing. We've got someone saying um, spectrum. That's a good one. Spectrum, like you have the electromagnetic spectrum or the colour spectrum, where you can see a whole range of different things. Um, you've also got words like species. A species, like we are humans, you have dogs, you have cats, you have horses, whatever. A species is something that scientists have looked at and can observe is its own group of animals. You've also got words like, do you know the word? Specious. Do you know what specious means? It just means beautiful, something worth looking at. You've also got words like, we've got all these going upside down now. I'll do it this way. Um, you've also got words like specimen. Um, Aparna has said specimen. Oops, sorry about this. Specimen. A specimen is sort of an example or sort of something you can look at as a, a model of whatever it is you're looking at. A fine specimen of a human. Um, or you might look at a specimen in a jar. Someone who is, oh, how about this one? Respect. Now, we know what respect means to have some sort of, um, you know, care or, as I said before, veneration of someone to treat something as if it's worthy and worthwhile. But how does respect, this root that means to see, relate to respect? Sarah? I think respect also means to look up at. So if you're looking up at something, it is related to observing or looking at. Possibly, yeah. What does re mean? When you have re as a prefix, Venkat, what does that mean? It means again. Again, to repeat, to redo, to reapply, to remind. Remind literally means to mind, to think again, doesn't it? So to respect means to look at again. If you respect someone, they are worthy of you giving them another look, having another look at them. You could think of it that way. Um, anyway, that's that one. Let's look at another one. How about, this is a relevant one. How about the Greek root word, pan? Not as in your pots and pans, What do you think the root pan relates to or means? Think of some words that you know that share that root and think about what a common meaning might be. It's not an easy one, this one. Tell you what, why don't we write down some examples first? It's not pancake, Vina, <laughs> but Bavna, um, Bavna's got one. Pantomime, we, we could use that one. And Sheena has given us a very relevant one, pandemic, something we are still in the middle of at the moment. Any other pan words, Rishi? Pandemonium. Oh, that's a good one. Pandemonium. Then cat. I think I might know what it means and seeing the words. Give me, give me one example word and then you can tell me. Um. Pantry. You know what? I'm not sure if that one 
is quite if it quite fits because sometimes you've got words that have pan in them like span or a spanner okay it's got pan in it but it's not the root of the word so i'm not sure pantry quite works or like window pane okay you've got the p-a-n in it but it doesn't actually it's not actually the root of the word um somebody has given me for example um what did they say there panorama there's a good one the root pan actually means everything or all. Let's go with all. That's the, that's the best way of thinking about it, all. So for example, a pandemic is something that affects all of the world or basically spreads everywhere. An epidemic is a, a, an illness that spreads within an area, but a pandemic spreads everywhere. Pandemonium is where there is a madness or chaos everywhere. It is all crazy. A panorama is a view of everything. So a panoramic view, if you stand on a mountaintop and you can see the sea and the sky from all directions, that is a panorama. You can see all of it. Um, let me give you some others. Oh, look at that. Rishi, either you or your mum have just put in this word, panacea. Was that you, Rishi? Yeah? Tell me what a panacea is. It's a cure for all illnesses. Exactly. It's a cure for all illnesses. Has anybody heard of Pandora? You might have heard the story of Pandora's box. And this is where we come back to the Greek origins of words. Who was Pandora, then, Kat? Pandora was the daughter of um, Zeus, I think. And then um, she, um, however, she got a box which was filled with all the world's worries and she accidentally opened them. Um, and then all the world got like turmoil, war, sadness and misery. Exactly, that's really good. Yeah, so Pandora actually means all gifted. And she, the story goes, the Greek myth goes that she was given this box and told not to open it. And she did. And it let out all of the world's ills and evils. And that's where we get illnesses and war and famine and hatred from. It's a myth, but it helps us to understand where the word comes from. We've also got words like, um, oh, here's a good one. Has anyone heard of Pangaea? We're going into science and natural history now. Venkat, what was Pangaea? Um, before a long time ago, all the world's countries and the continents were together, like in a group. That's called Pangaea, I think. Absolutely, Pangaea. Now, Gia, you actually, there was a, a Greek god called Gaia that was the, the god of the earth and land. That's where we get words like geology and geography and loads of words that relate to the ground and earth and so pangaea means all earth because it was the supercontinent all of the continents of the world were fused together millions of years ago and they over time broke off and spread apart see really interesting I get so excited about words. I don't know about you, but I love this stuff. Um, have we got any other pan words before we move on? Rishi? Um, pantheon, which is a temple for all the gods. The pantheon was where all the gods lived. Pantheon. I'm trying to think of some others. Uh, panoply. A panoply is like a whole range of everything. Um, and Kem has given a fantastic um, breakdown of the word pandemic, which I absolutely love. So you get the idea. We can break down words and their meanings by looking at the building blocks. We can talk about something called etymology, which I love, which is the origins of words. It's actually an area of study that allows us to trace back where words come from. That's a really good way of memorizing and really understanding 
new words and how they connect to other words. So when you come across a new word, you might be able to piece together the meaning, even if you've never seen that word before, because you see how it relates to other words. Shall I give you a couple of examples that I find really interesting? Do you know where the word biscuit comes from? I know you all know what a biscuit is. Do you know what the prefix bi means, B-I? Sarah? Uh, bi means two. Two. The number two. Give me some bi words. Then Kat? And people in the chat as well, people at home, bicycle. tell me some by words. Bicycle. A bicycle, meaning? Um, a cycle which has two wheels. Two wheels. Rishi? Biceps. Biceps. So I'm pretty sure that does relate to two because it's the muscle here and it's kind of, it branches off to this two kind of, I think, tendons that connect it to your bones. I'm not sure about that, but it does relate to two. Um, Kieran at home has said binary, which is really good because it means two options. We've got binary, like zero or one. Two options in coding and things like that. Um, Ronick has said biology. Now that's not the same because bio is the prefix meaning life. So it's not bi, that's bio. What about, Sarah? Um, I got binoculars. And... Binoculars. If something is ocular, it relates to vision, doesn't it? And binoculars, it's two lenses for you to look through, isn't it? Those are binoculars. Venkat, give me another one. Biannual. Biannual. Bi now, there's biannual and there's biennial, whoops, which are two different things. Um, a, something that happens biannually, hang on, one of them means every two years and one of them yeah. means twice a year. Yeah. Biannual. I was talking know. about twice a year. You were talking about twice a year. I'm pretty sure biannual means twice a year. Biennial is every two years. Let me check that in a minute. Um, we've got the word, someone's saying the word bill. Now that is not the same thing. The word bill, I know it's got B-I in it and the word bind has B-I in it, but that doesn't, it's not quite the same thing. You've got to think of it as a prefix that adds on to a root. So we're talking about um, a prefix of by here. Now, let me break it down for you. Biscuit comes... I believe from the French, which means twice baked. You know that? That's etymology, okay? It's not quite the same thing as what we did with pan and speck, but it's the origins of words. Now, learning about that, I could do it all day. I find it so interesting. Um, oh, I'll tell you one more that I really like. Do you know the word sincere? What does sincere mean? Sarah? Honest. Honest, genuine. Yeah, if you're sincere about something, you're not being fake about it. You're not pretending, you're being honest. Now, if I told you that sincere comes, I believe, from Italian, and it means without wax. What? Without wax. Now that doesn't help you understand the meaning unless I tell you a little story. Back in the olden days, when a sculptor would make some sort of uh, amazing sculpture on a plinth, I'm doing a very sketchy drawing here. Here's your sculpture on a plinth, right? <laughs> Not my best artwork. You've got a sculpture on a plinth, right? And they would carve it out of stone. It would take months or years to make. Think about Michelangelo carving the famous sculpture of David. If there were any cracks in the marble, the person who was buying it wouldn't want it necessarily because it's damaged. So the sculptor, if they were naughty and sneaky, they would fill the cracks with wax to hide 
all the cracks, right? The person buying it goes, thank you very much. Here's your money. And however long later, when that wax melts away or wears off, they suddenly see it's full of cracks again. So sincere comes from the meaning without wax. In other words, is it genuinely as valuable as it looks? Is it real, genuine, authentic? You're not tricking me by hiding it, hiding all the cracks with wax. Do you like that? I love this stuff. I'm a real nerd when it comes to words. Okay, let's try this now. If I gave you a really big fancy word like this, can you read out that word for me, Rishi? Anti-disestablishmentarianism. Almost. It's pronounced anti-disestablishmentarianism. Sarah, say anti-disestablishmentarianism five times quickly. Anti-disestablishmentarianism, 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 anti-disestablishmentarianism. Well, that was better than I was expecting. Well done. Um, put your hand up if you know what it means. No idea? How many people at home know what it means? It's a nice long word, this. Now, this is a, a longer, fancier word than you're likely to use in your creative writing. But I'm going to show you how to break it down and make meaning out of it. Okay, this is one of the things that we're going to do in our masterclass on vocabulary mastery on the 30th of January. So I bet you and everyone at home knows exactly what this bit means, anti. Ooh, let's just do that, anti. Not your auntie Marjorie, your mother's sister. What does that bit mean, anti? If you are anti something or think of some words that use it tell me what it means rishi what does anti mean it means against or opposed against or opposed to give me a word that has anti in it go on rishi while we're still with you antivirus antiviral or antivirus the opposite or against the virus sarah give me one antiseptic antiseptic something that kills germs something that is against the spread of germs um then have you got one anticlimactic anticlimactic so instead of the climax the big crescendo the big exciting moment of maybe a piece of music or a play or a book the anticlimax is it wasn't actually very exciting anyway opposite of a climax Someone in the chat, Bavna has said antidote, we've got antibiotic, we've got anti-clockwise, antibodies, we've got not antique, I don't think that's the, quite the same thing. Um, so there you go. I bet you all know words that have dis, D-I-S in them. What do you think dis means? Somebody's already given us disinfectant. What do we think? I'm sorry about those weird noises. Please just try and ignore them. Um, Venkat, what does dis mean? Not. Not, or the opposite of, right? So if you disagree with me, you do not agree with me. If you are disapproving of my behavior, it means you don't approve. Someone, uh, Prashita said, when something is negative. Very good. Somebody said disc again. Disc is not an example of it being used as a prefix, um, but someone said disadvantaged. That means not advantaged. Exactly. What about to establish something? What is it to establish something? Got some other great examples here of dis words like discharge, disobedient, dislike, disobedient. What does it mean to dis uh, di uh, to uh, sorry establish something, Venkat? Means to found something, like find it. To found or to create. 
or to make. So let's say it's a bit of a simplification, but let's say something that is created. And munt, when you have munt, oops, something that an establishment, that is something that is, we'll put that together. We'll put that bit together. An establishment is, we could say, something that has kind of been set up or made like the government. It is an establishment. So the school system, hospitals, civilization is full of establishment. We've established lots of things and put them in place, right? So it could mean various things, but it's often used in this case to mean the government. Let's just put the government in brackets here. What is an Aryan? Now, not an Aryan meaning someone who's blonde and blue eyed, but when you put Aryan as a suffix on the end of a word, like vegetarian, what does it mean? What do you think it means, Venkat? It do, does it mean a person who is what is describing, like humanitarian? Humanitarian, yeah. It's the kind of person who is maybe, let's say, a follower of an idea. So although a vegetarian doesn't necessarily follow something, they, they follow an idea that you shouldn't eat animals, for example. Give me some other Aryan words. We've got, someone said librarian, sure. We've got, you've said a humanitarian. You've got a, uh, you could say utilitarian, which is somebody who has a certain political ideology or follows a particular idea. Have you got any others? Someone has said a Gregorian calendar. Um, that Ian, that I-A-N, often does go on the end of words like that. Um, someone said aquarium, that's aquarium, I-U-M. I uh, someone said a Sagittarian, yeah, that works. So someone who follows something, and then ism. What is an ism? What, what do we mean when we put ism on the end of a word? kind of makes it into a noun, but what does it mean, Rishi? A belief. It's, a, it's exactly that. It's a belief of a particular person. For example, words like Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism. These are belief systems of people, aren't they? Religions in this case, but you've got other isms as well, like um, conservatism which is a kind of political belief of keeping things the same. You've got progressivism, which is a political belief of changing things and things progressing over time. Someone said communism, socialism, favoritism. Ma yeah, not, yeah, we've got a real mix here. Um, someone said magnesium, that's I-U-M, not I-S. So let's break it down now, okay? Well, sorry, we've broken it down. Let's make sense of it. We've got, whoops, we've got something that's established. Let's say the government, okay? Disestablishment would mean to, let's say, go against or break down or abolish the government, right? What would it mean if you are anti-disestablishment then? If disestablishment means to demolish or destroy the government, what would it mean if you are anti-disestablishment, Sarah? Um, I think it means if you're against destroying the government. Exactly. You're against. You don't agree with destroying the government. So that would make you a, uh, Rishi? And an anti-establishment anti anti Arianism. Not the ism, but it would make you an anti-disestablishmentarian. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And if you are an anti-disestablishmentarian, then your belief system is called, drum roll, anti-disestablishmentarianism. Ta-da! So that is the belief that we should not 
destroy the government or we should not go against the establishment. It's the belief of a person who doesn't want to go against the establishment. Now, when you first saw that word, did you think that was going to be such an easy to understand word? No. Now, have a look at this word. Venkat, can you pronounce that? Because I'm not sure I can. <laughs> Numino ultra microscopy silico volcaniconiosis. That was a pretty good attempt. That was a pretty good attempt. Numo, it's a it's a silent P at the beginning there. Numo ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis. Now. Who wants to decode what that word means? Well, we're not going to. We're going to do that on the 30th, 30th of January. If you come to my masterclass, go to linkythinks.com slash classes, where we will break down that exact word. Now, we've not got that long left. What I was going to do was spend some time talking about the specific use of words. Have any of you got your word word up? Ah, look at that, what dedicated students. Do you want to turn to your green page? We'll do a little bit of this, and then we're going to play a game. In the chat, if you've got a word wheel book, say yes, say I, say I've got one. And turn to, if you've got the advanced book, you can turn to the green page. If you've got an elementary book, you can also turn to the green page, but there's there are more advanced words on this one. Now, we've already said that it's not just about using big words if you want to show that you've got a good vocabulary in, say, creative writing. Shall I show you a really quick video to explain my worst nightmare when it comes to my students using lots of basic boring words? Why not? Let's have a little breather because I've been talking a lot. Um, hang on, where is it? Oh, it's disappeared. Bear with me one second. Ah, here it is. Okay, I'm going to show you this little video. I hope you enjoy it, and then we'll talk about it. Have a look at this. Unusual, creepy old, big, large, blue house. <laughs> How many bedrooms? Three. A large, impressive, spacious, elegant, commanding, beautiful ensuite for yourselves. A cosy, warm, welcome, nice, bright, safe single for Alice, and a small, sweet, snug, petite, pretty little, compact, neat, charming single. <laughs> Perfect for the little one on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that sounds great. The little one can stay in Vera's cosy, warm, welcoming, bright, nice, safe study. How odd, strange, bizarre, and weird. Where did you find that? Well, she must have found it in the spacious, impressive, verdant green garden surrounding the unusual, creepy old, big, large blue house. Oh, what was that? It came from Vera's cosy, warm, welcoming, nice, bright, safe study. So that was from the Goes Wrong show. And what went wrong in that video? And what goes wrong in some people's creative writing when they use vocabulary in the same way? Sarah? Um, I think they use too many words to describe one thing rather than um, sticking to one or two words. So it was a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> Definitely a mouthful. Anyone have anything to add to that? Thank you. Some of the words that some people said didn't make quite some sense. How can a bedroom be commanding? I didn't understand that. That's true as well. Do we all agree that rather than using loads and loads of adjectives, it would be better to use one that just does the job of all of those? Could we agree that rather than using 
loads and loads of words to describe what someone is doing, it could sometimes be better to use one specific verb that shows what they're doing, right? So let's open this back up again to your adjectives and your verbs, word wheels. Um, for anyone who hasn't got those, you can go on Amazon Prime or you can go on linkythinks.com forward slash shop to get your word wheels now. Um, put your hand up. Have any of you got siblings? Ben Cat, how many siblings have you got? One. One. Brother or sister? Brother. What's he called? Mihir. Mihir. I've got two brothers, Daniel and Oliver. You've met them, haven't you? If I said, for example, um, Daniel looked at Ali with so much anger, fury, rage, and disdain in his eyes that he looked like he was about to explode, for example. Could we convey all of that anger, rage, fury, disdain in a verb? I reckon we could. Turn to your green word wheel. Instead of where it says saw, how about sneered? If we said Daniel sneered at Ali, or what if we said Daniel, we could say, how about he glared at Ali as if he were about to explode? Isn't that better than looked? Doesn't that convey all of the rage and anger? You know, that could be an example, not always, but that could be an example of how using the right piece of vocabulary is more interesting than using lots of vocabulary. What if I wanted to say, um, Ali walked down the street in such a, an unstable and wonky way that he looked as if he were drunk. Just made that up on the spot. Could you find a verb from the warped section of the green word wheel that does the job of all of those words in a single verb? Sarah? Um, Ali hobbled down the street. Hobbled could be good. Hobbled might imply an injury or like I'm in pain more than like I'm drunk. Um, but it's a good one. Rishi? Ali staggered down the street. Staggered is a good one. You'll be happy to know I don't often stagger down the street. I'm not a big drinker. But there's a good word, staggered. Now, I've seen students who go straight to the longest word. Here's an example, perambulated. Now, could we say Ali perambulated down the street? It's not necessarily the best word to use there. Just because it's the longest doesn't mean it's the best. Could we say, if we said, I was looking out, let's say, at a beautiful sunset. I've got a really nice word here that means looked, looked at or saw. Could I say, Ali scrutinized the sunset? Not really. To scrutinize means to look with such detail and attention that you're trying to almost like find flaws or problems with it. You might scrutinize a document to try and, you know, understand every, mo every little bit of it. So it's definitely a long fancy word, but is it the best word? Not for that context, not for that situation. Now, we're gonna play a little game. Some of you have played this game with me before. Some of you, watching at home have played this game with me before. You might have seen my video on it on the Linky Thinks website. It's a game I call Word Sneak. Sarah Venkat, you've played it with me before, haven't you? Rishi, you haven't. So this is your first time. Watch carefully. It's really easy and it's quite fun. Word Sneak is a game that allows you to practice using words in real life, in in the wild, you might say, in their contexts, right? Because I've seen so many students who have books and books and books 
notepads galore with loads of fancy words that they don't know how to use. What's the point of having a big fancy vocabulary if you don't know how to use it? Words are meant to be useful. They're there to be used. They are tools for expression and communication. So we're going to play a game where we practice exactly that. All of you three have got five or six words jotted down, haven't you? I don't know what they are. I've got some words here. And you don't know what they are. We're going to try and have a natural conversation. And I want everybody at home to keep an, a keen ear out for what you think the selected words are. OK, have a piece of paper and jot them down or you can type them into the chat. And you've got to see if you can pick out the words that we have slipped into conversation naturally. That we got from our list. I'll say that in a clearer way. We're going to try and slip these words or sneak these words into conversation in a natural way. And we want everybody listening to try and see if they can spot which words were on the list. And if we use them in a really convincing, natural way, then that's a good sign. If they seem a bit clunky or a bit forced or a bit obvious, people are going to know and they get a point for spotting that word. Now, what we also might want to do is slip in a few red herrings to trick people. You'll see how it goes. I'm going to practice with Venkat, OK? You, get, you happy to give it a go with me? And then we'll have a go with Sarah and then with Rishi. So everybody at home, listen carefully. Get ready to jot down the words that you think Venkat and I have selected. I'm going to do the same ones for you, Venkat. So I'm going to jot down as we talk. I'm going to see if I can figure out which words you've selected. So I'll take a sip of my water. Venkat, how are you? And finally, how are you? Oh, I'm so well, thank you. Did you have a lovely weekend? I had a phenomenal weekend. Did you really? Tell me what you got up to. We are watching an, a Marvel movie. What was it like? Um, we were watching the Avengers Endgame. It was really gripping. Oh, you know what? I can't cope with games like that. I find them far too manic. They stress me out. There's just so much going on, all those action scenes. Uh, honestly, they, you know, they, they just give me this sense of doom and tension that I can't cope with. What, did, what do you like about them? What I liked about them is that they, there's always a problem and they try to conquer it. Um, I'm actually a fervent and enthusiastic um, supporter and follower and watcher of these Marvel MCU cinematic universe. Are you really? Are yeah. you really? Well, um, I have to say I prefer comedy films personally. I just like the, the sort of the humour. I like sitting in a film and just enjoying myself and feeling this total escapism um, into the world of comedy and silliness. That's, that's just how I, that's how I feel. Venkat, let me ask you, um, how was your winter holidays? Did you, do your family celebrate Christmas? Did you get up to anything interesting over Christmas, New Year? Um, we went over to our friend's house in this New Year and we were, we went, I was in playing um, some action-packed movie, action-packed games. Okay. He was now, quite admirable. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Um, now, a lot of people find that because they spend so much time with family over the Christmas period that they end up getting to arguments, family arguments. It can be a quite a turbulent time for families, all crammed in the house at the same time, arguing, bickering. But your family, you all get on great, right? You're all a harmonious group, right? Yep, you're right on that one. Oh, I thought so. I thought so. Okay, pause. And scene, back in the room. Did you get through all your words, Venkat? Yep. Got yeah, I got through mine. 
I can already see in the chat that people are jotting down words they think we both um, we picked. I put in a few red herrings there. Did you? Yep, same. Ah. Now, the fun thing about this game is that even when it goes wrong and words don't quite fit, you're still learning because it's all about learning how words fit into sentences. And sometimes you use them, they're a bit clunky. You learn how they don't work and that's part of the educational experience. So, Sarah, which words did you notice that Venka and I were using that you think were selected? I think there were definitely, I think, some red herrings there. Okay. Um, so tell me some that you noticed. I think one of Venkat's words is action packed. Was that one? No, that was a red herring. Rishi, did you get any for Venkat or me? Um, I think phenomenal, I got. I got red phenomenal. Red herring. Ah, uh -uh. right. What about conquer? Did you have conquer? Red herring again. Oh, you sneaky thing. Fervent. Oh, yeah, you got that one. Okay, I got a point. Uh, I know some people at home got the word fervent. Now, the word viable didn't quite fit. Was that one of your selected words? Um, I said amiable. Oh, amiable. Amiable. Which means friendly. Right, I misheard you. Was that one that you selected or was that a red herring? Um, it was one I selected. Ah, okay. So if anybody got amiable... They'd get a point. Venkat, did you get any for me? Um, yeah, I got manic. 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 That was one of mine. You get a point. Escapism. Escapism was a red herring. Oh. Turbulent. Turbulent was one. You get a point for that. Bickering. Bickering was just a, a, a red herring, just a word I put in there for fun. Harmonious. Harmonious was one, yeah. Was Doom one? No, Doom just came out. Off the cuff, just I improvised that one. Very good. Okay, people at home. Sheetal said she got amiable. A few people got turbulent, doom, bickering. Okay, harmonious. Sarah, do you want to have a go? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Everybody listening carefully at home, have your ears peeled. Sarah, tell me, um, once you've got all your 11 plus exams out of the way, how do you intend to celebrate and relax and enjoy yourself? I'm sure after my young class, um, it's all going to be very tranquil for me. Um, and I'm also going, I'm also going to learn, uh, learn new skills and um, some, some uh, skills were superfluous for the 11 class because they didn't quite help. But I think I'll be able to uh, learn those skills after, and, I, and I'm quite excited to do it. Yeah, and you know, there are so many transferable skills when you study at Free 11 Plus that nothing really goes to waste, nothing is superfluous because you can take these skills on into your later life and thrive and blossom and bloom into the marvelous woman I'm sure you will become. Tell me, Sarah, um, I was in a bit of a predicament this morning, and I want your opinion I want I want to ask your advice if that's okay I was walking Sid my dog right we went for a lovely walk it was beautiful weather today we went to um, Epping Forest for a little walk and Sid went into the bushes to do his business right he went off to do a poo and I went in my pocket and I realized my pocket which usually is for those poo bags was vacant no poo bags to be seen i'd run out of poo bags okay was i wrong for leaving the poo there should i have asked a stranger excuse me do you mind if you could give me one of your dog's poo bags am i a bad person would you say that makes me an irresponsible dog owner um that must have been quite a tempestuous time for you it was or it really was <laughs> <laughs> um but you surely wouldn't get castigated for that <laughs> um i'm glad you think so would you have, if you were there and you'd seen me would you have chastised me would you have, you have gone oh you go and pick it up with your bare hands you disgusting man is that what you would have said 
No, I would have surely assisted you. <laughs> oh, that's good to know. And I appreciate that. I appreciate uh, that very much. Unfortunately, I do not have a dog, so I wouldn't have any poo bags. Well, I still appreciate your advice because you are a kind and benevolent young woman. And thank you. I appreciate it. And see. I thought that went well. Um, Venkat, Rishi, did you get any words? I got predicament. Predicament. That was one of mine. Well done. Nice. Um, any of Sarah's? Sarah, did you get ca castigated? Yes. Castigated get... was a great one. Did you get tempestuous? Yes. Superfluous? Yeah. Superfluous is a good word, meaning tranquil. redundant. And... Say again? Um, yeah, I did get tranquil. Tranquil. Rishi, um, have you got any others? Oh, no, that was it. Anyone at home? Let's see. Uh, someone has said benevolent. That was one of mine. Well done at home there. Vacant. That was a red herring. I put that in for fun. Um, then, Kat, do you have um, any more? Transferable. No, that was just, I just said that on the spot. Um, okay, Rishi, let's have a quick go with you and then we're going to wrap things up because we've been going over, over time. Do you think you get the rules now? You know how it works? Yes. You ready to go? Okay. Now, Rishi, take your time. I know you're not necessarily the most loquacious person, but just keep the conversation flowing and we'll be okay. So, Rishi, tell me, what do you have planned for the coming week? So in the coming week, I'm going to Liverpool. I'm an aficionado of it, and I find their games are nail-biting. Sometimes their performance is deplorable, but mostly they are they play of that they play of high standards and they score lots of goals. That is that is you know I know that um, keeping standards is important to you, and you know you being a respectable person yourself, you want to make sure your football team behaves themselves. Um, is it fair to say that coming up in the next week, you are going to be um, starting back to work with the most um, verbose um, but rigorous tutor known to man? Yes, yes indeed. Indeed I am. <laughs> Who would that be? You, of course. I can't wait. Are you in my comprehension class? Yes. You're in the Wednesday slot or the Saturday slot? The Wednesday. I am absolutely glowing with joy to know that I'll be working with you again. Let me, let me ask you, um, Rishi, um, you take my classes very seriously, don't you? You're not a flippant student. You don't, you know, you don't mess around. You take it seriously. You, you focus. What can I do as a tutor to sort of um, make sure that my students remain studious? And uh, I'm focused. Maybe you could, um, maybe. I don't know either. But, you know, luckily, my students are all really well behaved, as you know. Let me ask you a different question. Um, do you have any pets? No. Would you like any pets? Do you like animals? Yes, I would, I would love a dog. Would you? It's a, it's a great joy having a dog. You know, they, they're so full of energy. My dog is just absolutely um, the most... Um, one second. He is the most sociable and um, affectionate animal that I've ever met. Yes. What, what sort of pet would you like and why? I would like a, um, a husk a bulldog because uh, I I quite enjoy bulldogs as they are quite big and also I like their um, I like Do you find them um, to be do you find them to be do, do, they, do they give you sort of substantial joy in your life? Is that, is that something you would Yes, say? they give me the utmost joy in my life. The utmost joy? I'm glad to hear it. Well, maybe one day you'll get a dog. Are your parents, do your, have your parents forbidden it? 
Do they yes, they are, you from having a... they are completely against the idea, but I am trying to convince them to get me one. Well, good luck with that. You know, my mum once said to me, you're not having a dog. It's me or a dog. And I said, mum, are you saying that if we get a dog, you'll leave? And she said, yeah. I said, that's so sad. I'm going to miss you. Bye. Um, I didn't say that. That's a joke. Um, end scene. Did you manage to get through your words there, Rishi? Yes. Fantastic. I could tell that you were struggling towards the end because you'd already used them. That's the problem with being so good at word sneak. Venkat, Sara, tell me what words you got for us. And people at home, put them in the comments. Um, did you use verbose? Verbose was one of mine, yeah. Did, did you get flippant? Flippant was one of mine, well done. Did you have loquacious? Loquacious was one of mine. Loquacious means somebody who talks a lot. Did you have rigorous? Rigorous was one I said on the spot. That was a red herring. Did you have substantial? Substantial was one of mine. Did you get any of Rishi's? Um, yeah. Did, do you have fanado? Fanado. I didn't know how that's spelled. Yeah. Oh, aficionado. aficionado. Yes. That was a good one. Was that one of yours, Rishi? Aficionado? Yes. Fantastic. Did you have deplorable as well? Yes. Fantastic. I get a couple of points there. Any that we haven't said already? Yeah, nail biting. Nail biting, yes. That's a good one, nail biting. People have said, a few people have said deployable. That word was deplorable, which means something that um, you condemn, something that is... Um, very appalling behavior. Someone who behaves de deplorably, somebody who behaves in a way that is worthy of your anger and disdain. Okay, I think that went pretty well. I hope everyone at home can see how this is a great game to play with your parents, with your friends, with your teachers, in a way that doesn't just put a load of words in a book. It's all about practicing using them. It's all about showing that you know how words can be helpful and useful to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite Sarah, Venka and Rishi to say goodbye. And I'm going to invite everybody at home to type a big thank you to all three of them for joining us and for helping me out today. So please do that now. Thank you so much. Round of applause. Can you hear out your windows as people all over the country applauding you thanks so much guys i really appreciate it and i will see some of you soon unmute yourself say goodbye and then i will just round off with a few thoughts for everybody at bye. home bye. bye guys thank you bye 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 so everybody at home let me hang on a second Everybody at home, I hope you've enjoyed that session. As I said from the beginning, it wasn't just about cramming you with words. It was about giving you the skills and confidence to decode words. We're going to go a lot deeper in our masterclass on the 30th of January. So I hope some of you can join us there. All you need to do is go to linkythinks.com forward slash classes, where we'll be going much deeper into all of this stuff. Um, Look at the word wheel books and the description area on the Linky Thinks website. And remember, when you're using vocabulary, it's not just the biggest word. It's not just the one with the most syllables. It's not just the fanciest one that's going to help you express what you want to say. You can use fancy words, but it's about choosing the right ones for the right context. And that's what I hope I've given you a little taster of today. Take some of those skills in breaking down longer words. Learn a little bit about root words. Learn a little bit about etymology, the history of where words come from. Apart from being really fun and exciting, if you know a little bit of Latin and a little bit of Greek and some, a little bit of stuff about Greek mythology, you're going to find that even when you come across big, scary words that you've got no idea what they mean, you might be able to approach them with a bit more confidence because you can decode them using that knowledge. I've had a lot of fun today. 
Thank you for allowing me to go a little bit over time. And I hope to work with you some of you with some of you soon. We've got one or two places left on my critical thinking class that starts tomorrow. Um, a couple on my comprehension class that starts on Saturday. And I think one more on my creative writing slot for Sunday. The Tuesday and Thursday slots are full and so is the Wednesday one. But if you want to join, if you want to work with me, get in touch and we'll find a way of making it happen. Um, I think that's it. Any questions, put them in the chat and I will try my best to answer them for you. If you haven't already, give this video a like. It helps other people to find it. And yeah, have a lovely Sunday evening and I'll see you all very soon. Bye everyone.